Good morning and everyone and welcome to today's press conference here at Shell Energy Stadium. I'm Ashley Klinkscale, the Vice President of Communications and Public Relations for the Houston Dynamo Football Club. And on behalf of us, we, it's our, my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to you all here today. Thank you for coming out for our very, very special announcement. I will now hand it over to our President of Business Operations, Jessica O'Neill. Good morning. It is an especially good morning to see you all today, especially because we were supposed to be here last Monday and obviously uh, the city was being in the process of being hit by Hurricane Barrel, which I, I do just want to acknowledge everybody who worked hard to get the city back up and running. It's been a long week, uh, but we are here. We are in air conditioning. Uh, the, the traffic lights are moving and we're, we're playing football, uh, soccer, depending on who you speak to. So it's fantastic. Um, it's great to see so many familiar faces in the audience, the media that have been here, especially during a, a busy week. Thank you uh, for making time to join us today on short notice to our supporter leadership, which we have both from the Dash and Dynamo. Thank you all. You are the heartbeat and the lifeblood of what we do out in the stands. We're glad you could, could be here for such an important occasion. To our partners. Uh, we have our partners from Shell Energy, Chevron, uh, Silver Eagle, many, many groups today that were able to join us. Uh, thank you for making time. A lot of our leadership of our club. Uh, it's going to be a great occasion and I will uh, I will turn it back over so that we can hear a little bit more about why we're here today. But again, thank you for making time to join us. Uh, first of, of many, many exciting things on the horizon for the club. Thanks, Jess. All right, we are here for our special announcement. Today marks a very important milestone for us, and we appreciate your presence and interest. I will now hand it over to Ted Siegel, our owner. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, great to see so many familiar faces, alumni, partners, uh, fans of our organization here, so thank you for turning out. I'd like to start with a moment to recognize the many people who have been affected by last week's storm. I'm continuously inspired by the resilience of the people of Houston and struck by the generosity of this community and how it rallies together in times of crisis. We at the Houston Dynamo Football Club are privileged to be a part of this community and maintain our commitment to give back to the city and the people that have given us so much. I'm grateful and proud of our fans who provided their support on Saturday's 713 night, and I hope those uh, who are able can support in their own way. and. Uh, I wanted to remind folks that we have a food distribution event this afternoon at Houston Sports Park immediately following this event. Now, onto the news I wanted to share with you last Monday. Uh, the phrase has become cliche, but the person sitting with us here today needs no introduction, but I'll give one anyway, uh, because it would be a disservice to gloss over his myriad accomplishments. Tim Howard is a decorated, celebrated goalkeeper who was a pillar of the U.S. men's national team for nearly two decades legendary club player both here in MLS and for 13 years in the English Premier League. A student of the game with former front office experience and current NBC Sports Broadcasting. And an advocate for numerous important causes both with his own Tim Howard Foundation and working with groups like the U.S. Soccer Foundation of which I recently joined the board. He's an ambassador for the sport and by the way, a fellow North Brunswick Township High School graduate. <laughs> he's done a lot of things, and I'm proud that he's adding partner in the Houston Dynamo and Houston Dash to that impressive and growing biography. Tim and I had a number of lengthy discussions prior to agreeing on his investment. We talked a lot about what are the elements that make for a standout club. Our discussions revealed a lot of shared perspectives. Just a couple of dads with the same childhood reference points who wound up in New York City talking all things soccer. Of course, he came to the conversation with the resume I just listed, and I came with it with the three years of experience here in Houston. But it became clear in those conversations that we are aligned that Houston is showing it can begin, again be a soccer powerhouse. And in my long-held organizational objectives of consistently contending for championships, giving our fans a first-rate experience, and making a meaningful impact on the community. So why Tim? Besides his legendary playing career and wealth of soccer knowledge that will add an informed perspective within our ownership, he has a unique platform to help us achieve the three pillars I always talk about. On building consistent championship contenders, he has a stature and a sway with players that I can never begin to approach, and that can help with recruitment and retention. The same idea carries over to conversations with our existing and potential partners 
who want to invest in the club and recognize the power and extent of his platform. Creating memorable experiences for our fans. For this one, I would extend it to our players. That is, Tim is someone who has been to soccer facilities around the world. He has a deep understanding of best practices at clubs and where infrastructure and experiences can be improved both for players and for fans. Moreover, Tim's presence will enhance fan engagement activities, creating memorable experiences for our fans, both at Shell Energy Stadium and beyond. Again, a perspective that I don't have. Finally, a proven devotion to giving back to the community. We've done great work at Dynamo and Dash Charities over the last three years, and I'm proud of how we have grown our impact. With Tim, we have someone who is aligned in recognizing the importance of community works and using our rare platform to serve and uplift those around us. We've accomplished a lot over the past three years, and I'm excited about our future. I'm pleased to welcome Tim as a partner in what we're building here in Houston. So Tim, welcome to the Houston Dynamo Football Club. Thank you all. Thank you, Ted. This is, uh, as you mentioned, a proud day. I'm, I'm beyond proud. I've had some incredible moments in the game, and um, today certainly is, is at the top of that list to, to be a partner with uh, Houston Dynamo Football Club and, and all that that encompasses is, um, has been a goal of mine uh, since I finished playing. Look, I, I, I've had friends who I've played with who I now call brothers and family, and uh, all they could do was tell me how great Houston is. And um, I've got my butt kicked here a few times. Um, so it's good to finally join the winning team. It, it really is. And look, I, I've, I've, I've taken a lot from this game uh, in the last, well, forever, really. But as a professional for 25 years, I took a lot. And yes, I gave my, my blood, sweat, and tears to it. But it's important that I give back. And I know that sounds philanthropic. And there's a, there's a part of that. It, what I, what I mean is there are so many elements um, to a football club that are important to me. Um, the fans, you the fans, are, are, are the lifeblood of the bedrock of any football club. I, I, re I remember playing for Everton Football Club for 10 years, and see I saw the same faces every single weekend, and they were there 30 years before me, and they'll be there 30 years after me. And so I understand the importance of community connectivity, a culture that's, that's created through the fan base, and, and that synergy with the organization. Um, why Houston? I, I've, I've spoken to a number of, of clubs and a number of uh, groups that want to get into soccer. Uh, and, and, and we've talked and I've, I've advised and, and we've had great conversations with the thought of uh, possibly joining the organization. And nothing really stuck, not because they weren't great people, um, but because the synergy wasn't there, and when I, and I met, when I met with Ted, and we, we talked about the Dynamo and the Dash and his vision, I, I immediately jumped out of my seat. I got so excited because so many of the thoughts and, and the hopes and the, the visions for both clubs aligned with exactly um, what I thought and, and, the, and the way that I thought a football club should be run. And, and I, I often say I've seen the upside of down and the bad side of good in, and in football. I've seen it all, and, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, but part of that is, is being able to use that experience and, and give back in a, in a major way uh, to a championship winning organization. I, look, I, I know that, that Ted outlined the, the pillars of, of the foundation, the success, and that's, that's a commitment to success on the field, of course. That's why we, that's why we watch sports. That's, that's the important part to all of us. But the community, the, the fan engagement, um, is important. I, I think that no no club can um, can sustain themselves without an incredible fan base. Um, when I was in Memphis in, in the USL, uh, a, le a level far below, um, was able to help build a football club from the ground up with with nothing, no resources, but the ones we put into it, and it, we were able to create a thriving organization. And through that, I saw the power and the impact that you can have in a local community. And, and, and to me, being able to be a part of the, the Houston family uh, is important. It's important to me, both on, on a professional but on a, on a personal level as well. And, and ultimately, in closing, I, we our hope as, a, as an ownership group and certainly as an individual is to make sure that, that Houston, on both the men and women's side, is uh, the premier global destination for anybody 
coming to America uh, and we're well on the way because of the deep championship winning roots that we have here, but hopefully that's for many more years to come. So thank you for today. Thank you both, Ted and Tam. We will now open up for questions for media and the audience. In the front, John B's gonna bring you the mic behind you. Hey, good morning. Uh, Josh Spencer with Texan Army, one of the supporters groups. Uh, so before I get to my question, I also just want to point out there's another uh, connection that Tim has with uh, Houston. In 2003, he was getting one of his first starts uh, with the U.S. national team against Mexico in what is now NRG Center and Manchester United sent one of their scouts to watch that match. And it was shortly thereafter that he got the call to jump abroad to Manchester United and eventually went to Everton. So uh, he has some connections to Houston as well. Uh, I was at that match, I, I distinctly remember. Well, it's a great memory because I remember everything and I forgot about that. <laughs> An amazing day, for sure. Um, so um, I guess the first question is, um, how often can we expect to go and see you here, not only at the stadium, but also in Houston. And secondly, um, when I was watching the Euros and the Copa America final over the, uh, um, over the weekend, I continually got the same response that I always get is, we have a huge soccer community here in Houston. Oh, I support this team, this team, this team. How about the Dynamo? Never been to a match. So my question is also, what do you think you can do in order to convert some of these football fans that already exist in Houston into becoming Dynamo fans. Brilliant start to the q and I mean, I'm smiling because I'm thinking of the greatest, greatest rivalry in the world, USA-Mexico. What an incredible game. Um, yeah, kick-started my, my European career as well. Um, how often can you, can you see me? My, I love football. I ooze it. I, I want to be around it. I want to be around the game. Um, I've already got my phone ringing off the hook about people wanting to come and, and watch the, the Dynamo and the Dash. Um, Again, with the, with the proximity of, of so many games, both on the men and women's side, I'll be at a lot of games. Um, whether that's here in Houston, hopefully as often as I can, but certainly around, around the country um, wa watching our teams and, and doing business for our teams in those markets. But yeah, the plan is to, is to be here and to be present, and I've told the players that as well. Like, I'm going to be as present as I can, both through my phone and in person and to help in any way I can. That's not. It's not empty. I continue to say, people say it all the time. I, I'm, I'm a phone call away and I'm happy to talk uh, football. I love it. I like to analyze it. I like to figure out what works, what doesn't on the business side, on the field. Um, the last part of your, your question is the most amazing question you could have ever asked. It's something that Ted and I talked about uh, about 10 days ago in New York. It's something that I have very high level conversations with some really um, intellectual, intelligent people in the game of football. Um, across the board in America, we have to do better because I see that. I see that uh, when I played in Denver, I see it in my home market in New York, New Jersey. Um, that's a real thing. That's a real factor. There are football fans amongst us who haven't been to a game. I get it. I see that. Um, I don't have the answer for you right this second. What I will tell you is, there's priorities one and one A, that's one. On, on, my, on my football checklist, bef before today, I've had these conversations constantly. I, I, I ran, a, a, I ran a, the team in Memphis, same, same issue. There are soccer fans there that would prefer to stay in the pub and watch Manchester United versus Chelsea but won't come to our game. That is, a, that is a, an American soccer problem that I, I truly believe will get solved. That's not pie in the sky, that's something we can we can solve. Look, ultimately, it's about community connectivity and offering uh, a, a safe place, a place where people feel welcome and wanted um, and appreciated across the board at a very high level. So again, I, I never, ever like to dodge questions. I never will. Um, but I, I can tell you that's why I love the question, because it's something that I spend a lot of hours on, even in my regular daily life, having coffee or having, having a beer, because it's something that is been, you know, I've been kicking a soccer ball in America for a very long time, since probably 1986. And it's something that's kind of haunted us for a long time. So we're on it. I can, I can assure you that. Yeah, one question right here, and then I'll come to you. George Zappone from Dynamo Fan TV. Uh, Tim, welcome to Houston. Uh, a question, what can the fans expect from you and Ted Siegel going forward with, mm. with this ownership? Um, 
hopefully a progressive um, thought process and plan of action that we can that we can put in place. I, you know, certainly, Ted has, and, and the group have done that uh, since they've they've taken over the organizations. But look, I, I think when when it comes to running and operating a football club, everything needs to be on the table. Every voice needs to be heard. Players' complaints, likes and dislikes. Fans' complaints, likes and dislikes. How do we get more uh, sponsors through the door? There's, you know, it's a broad spectrum. Um, I, I, I've mentioned to our team at HQ in, in every single way possible to, to use me uh, in terms of boots on the ground. I have a lot of connections in the game that, that as I mentioned, my phone's ringing off the hook because now Houston is something they're interested in, right? And for me, it's important to leverage as many of those relationships and, and build a, a perennial contender that wins on both the men's and women's side. At, that's ultimately why we're in the game, is, is, to, is to win. Um, you don't have a divine right to win. Losing hurts, but ultimately the idea is to put a competitive team. Because I think when you look at football across the board, for me, all fans want is a competitive team that, that have the opportunity to win. No one wins every game, except Arsenal back in 2003. I did save a penalty and we missed one, but that's, that's for another day. Most teams don't win all the time. And, and what fans want more than anything is a commitment from their group, an idea that we have the right path to winning, even if it, if it doesn't happen every, every week. And that's something that I'm committed to from my end. And again, this day one on the job, well, it's not. It's officially day one. I was doing some work behind the scenes uh, for the dash last week in terms of a player. But that's, again, there is no, there is nothing that I'm not willing to lift on. So Ted can speak to his part of it, but for me, um, again, whether that's the fans, the players, or the front office, I'm in. Yeah, I, th I think just in the process of uh, getting to Tim within our ownership, it was a very constructive dialogue, and I think we're going to maintain and expand on that, so it's going to be very collaborative. I think from my perspective, why do you ever bring on an additional partner? It, I don't have to, but there has to be a good reason to do it. And, and so I, I, I think I would distill it into perspective and platform, right? Tim brings a perspective that I don't have, and so that we now have within our ownership. His perspective from seeing the game of soccer for the last 25 years around the world. What are the best things that you can do for the player, for the fan, for our infrastructure, for amplifying the game? And, and that's the platform part of it, right? Uh, again, uh, I'm a fairly mild-mannered guy who flies under the radar. Tim uh, is on NBC Sports every weekend, uh, you know, in, in your kitchen or in your living room and has the ability to elevate our teams, our brand, globally uh, in a way that I can never imagine. So again, it's, uh, it, it's beneficial to our organization to have his perspective and his platform. Thank you. Chris? Hi, Tim. My name is Chris Caters, ASN Sports TV. Welcome to Houston, the land of Everything. <laughs> We're excited to have you here. Well, um, your, your accolades are enormous. You've won and played in everything the World Cup. You've played in Manchester United, one of the best clubs in the world, I know that, right? You spoke about founding fans' engagement. I said, in um, 2014, LAFC bought their franchise. Um, prior to that kickoff in 2018, LAFC sent people, a group of people, to Borussia Dortmund to understudy the fan base and that's where they created the 3252. And you can tell that today the LFC fan base 3252 is one of the biggest fan base in the United States. So what strategy and due with your experience and you know, what you already have um, gotten with your experience, like how can you leverage your experience to try to you know, bring that kind of um, energy to the stadium? Because if you go to Houston and the packs every weekend, it's full with people playing soccer. Correct. People love soccer here, they love it. So what strategy or what model are you going to emulate to try and convert this already soccer-loving people to become fans of Houston Dynamo? Yeah, another great question. Where, where are you from originally? Nigeria. Of course you are, yeah, of course. I, listen, I, I, played with, I played with three world-class Nigerians, the captain, Joseph Yobo, yeah. uh, a captain of Nigeria, and he, he had family here in Houston, so I know it's a proud community. Um, yeah, they're, they're our, listen, our very similar to the first question. Our parks are filled. They are. There are parks and our streets and our pubs and restaurants are filled with soccer fans, not just in Houston, ac across this country. 
Um, and it's an it's a enormous challenge. Um, how do we do that? We, we have to not, not only make the game day experience um, financially affordable, sustainable, safe, all of the things that go in, you know, all of the buzzwords that go into that within the stadium, but it's also getting in the, into those communities and, and pinpointing certain um, groups. It's as simple as whether that be football clubs, whether that be local businesses, it's important it's important that we we turn them over and convert them into Dino and Dash fans. That doesn't happen overnight. Um, football fans are stubborn. They are, and that's that's the and, and that's what makes them great. It is truly what makes them great. Um, and I, and as I said, what LAFC did is is an incredible marker that they laid down because I've played there. Um, I've seen it. I've witnessed it. In fact, one of my favorite tattoo artists that I just saw out in LA recently, and I got tattooed by. He's he's one of the original founders of of their supporters group, and he raves about it. So maybe the answer is I'll speak more to him, and 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 I'll get I'll get the secrets because he'd be happy, you know, while he's torturing me for hours. I I can get those secrets, but no, I I mean that honestly. Part of part of my job is to, as, as Ted mentioned best practices to travel to use my 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 connections and my relationships to leverage and figure out what what are people doing to pack out their supporters groups and and, and have those conversations and again Atlanta's doing a very similar thing you know I'm the, I'm the godfather to Carlos Bocanegra's child and he's the, he's the president there so he owes me a few secrets and, and so these are things these are things that I plan on doing um, you know, on a business front, wearing the Houston hat is to go into those markets and have those have those tough conversations and find out what we can do to be even better. Diego. Hi, Tim. Diego Martinez Reyes from The Shot Magazine. Uh, could you talk a little bit about your time with Memphis and some of the things that you've learned now that you've moved on to the MLS here with Houston? Gosh, I learned a lot of lessons in Memphis. Um, what a, what a great group we had, you know. Building a building a club from the ground up um, is a pretty is a pretty special uh, thing to be a part of. You know, I, I talked to to our folks at HQ and I said when you're when you're a part owner in a USL club, you're you're taking tickets, you're doing sponsorship dinners, you're converting a baseball field <laughs> to a soccer field, and when it starts to thunderstorm, and you guys know about rain, you're, you run from your office down the stairs, and you pull the tarp, and it looks like a baseball game. You're, you're pulling this tarp across, and you know I say that to be funny, but it's, it's the truth, and I think you learn a lot about, um, for me, that was, that was, enormous, that was priceless. I, I came from playing at the highest level. Every player, whether they tell you or not, they have a God complex. They think the world revolves around them. I certainly did. And then you get into trying to build a football club. You make a lot of mistakes, and you learn you learn a lot about people. That's what I learned. I learned how important the people next to me were. I always knew how important the fans were, but you get a different sense of that when you're, you know, my, my job as a player is to throw my face in front of balls and win matches, and you better come watch, right? Like that. That's normal, but when you're on the other side of it, it's really getting down to the nitty gritty about what what it is a fan wants from their experience. Um, trying trying to be adaptable on the fly you know, when, when it comes to uh, when it comes to fan engagement, when it comes to dealing with agents. So the greatest thing I could have done was humble myself and figure out I didn't know it all. I knew I knew almost all about playing. I, I didn't know much about the other side of it and I got a crash course in, in how to run a, how to run an organization, both on the good and the bad. Um, but again it's about the people. It's about it's about relationships and understanding that there's a common struggle, that we're not always gonna get along, that we're not always gonna see eye to eye, but ultimately the fans want exactly what the ownership wants and, and ownership wants exactly what the players want. And there's this complete triangle that becomes a family, um, and if you can figure that if you can figure that out, um, then you're well on your way. And so for me, it was a, it was about people and about relationships, and uh, you build it brick by brick. Thank you, Rudy. Hello, Tim. Uh, welcome to Houston, uh, Rudy Segura with Bayou City Soccer. Um, curious about your relationship with Ben Olsen, and uh, just maybe the current status of the Dynamo. Mm. Um, Ben and I go way back. I always say, if you want dirt on him, just give me a holler. I, I you know, went to 
He was actually a really good player. I know you guys are thinking uh, that guy was a good player. He was good. Uh, 2000, went to the Olympics together. 2006, we went to the World Cup in Germany. Um, played against him a bunch. Um, and unfortunately, he was ravaged with injuries at the end. But what a player, what a guy. And uh, I've just known him for forever. And, um, you know, someone who, who, what I love about, you asked me the question about learning how to run an organization in, in Memphis. And, you know, Ben got thrown into the coaching world when he wasn't ready. He'll tell you that, you know. They needed a coach, and he was it. He was Mr. DC. And, and so he learned so much um, through the tough times and what, it, and what it was like to be in an, in an organization that obviously had tons of success. But, you know, at the beginning, he struggled. And he's learned a lot. He has a real good way with the players. Um, you know, I think Ben, Ted and I were talking today, the greatest thing about Ben is I've known him for 25 years, and he's the same. He's exactly the same. Good days, bad days, he, ne he never shirks his responsibilities. He's always going to let you know how he's feeling, what's important. Um, and, and that resonates with the players, and you can see that. And he's adaptable as a coach, and that's important. And obviously, um, you know, the, the, the run, I, I think, you know, the run that, that – the Dynamo have been on um, is a good one. They've been resilient. You can see that. You can see that they've, they've been tested. Um, I talked to our folks at HQ about these are the dog days of summer. No other, no other league in the world has to deal with this, but it's our reality, and it makes or breaks teams. And when I when I stand in front of the team today, I see a team that's energized. That's also uh, bolstered by the fact that there's a new signing in the building. And 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 you know I, I talked about it. it it's incredible. I, I wish some of you could feel what it's like to be in a dressing room and to have rumors swirling about a new player coming in, you know, and then, and then they get signed. And even as a senior player, I, I, was, I was captain of the Colorado Rapids from 2016 to 2019, had a good start to my career there. Then we had some tough days. And I can remember every time the transfer window opened, we were like giddy little kids on, on Christmas morning because we're like, this guy's going to change our fortunes. And whether that, I think it will, but whether that is the truth or not, it, it, it gives everybody this, this lift and this euphoria that, that we can then kick on from here. And so uh, the team looks like it's in a really good place. And so I'll, obviously this was my first time physically being around them, um, but there'll be more, to, more of that to come. Thanks. Luis? Uh, Luis Ortiz from KHOU. Ted, good to see you again. Tim, welcome to Houston. Uh, a question for each of you. Ted, you mentioned earlier, you know, you didn't have to bring in someone else, right? So I'm wondering if you can share with us, how did this come about? How did you end up, you know, starting to talk to Tim? And what did you see that, you know, you wanted to bring him on board? And then for Tim, for you, what do you see as the biggest challenge for the Houston Dynamo? And how would you like to address it? Yeah, so as I mentioned in my remarks, uh, and as some of you know, uh, our, our history go, go, goes back 30 plus years. We grew up in the same town. Tim's a couple years older than me. And so like many of you, uh, I've watched him from the stands. It just happened to be that it was at a much earlier point, and it made me quickly realize that I wasn't going to be where he, where he was uh, going to be one day. Um, but uh, look, followed his career with uh, great pride and admiration, and, uh, and then watched his impressive transition uh, to what he was doing in Memphis and what he was doing at NBC Sports. And, uh, you know, again, thinking about the criteria of what is beneficial to an ownership and bringing on additional partners, um, th this is a, a guy with a wealth of soccer knowledge, um, uh, an unbelievable connectivity to the world of soccer and beyond. Um, and uh, and then really uh, at his core, when we when we reconnected, and this was uh, back in January, when we started uh, exploring the opportunity, um, uh, because it made so much sense for the reasons I described, um, kind of a uh, an alignment in thinking, and and with that kind of uh, foundational commonality of experiences that that we were bringing to the table, that just made it an easygoing conversation that developed over the next six months as we talked more and more about uh, the world of soccer, uh, life in Houston, um, what our plans are for growing the Dynamo and Dash, and, and just broader things about, about life as two guys in their 40s with, uh, with kids and, uh, and, and ambitions. And, and, and so um, part of it is, again, 
is extensive qualifications, and part of it is the, the individual, the person uh, who is sitting next to me. So uh, you, you got to kind of cross both those thresholds uh, for it to make sense, and, and of course he did uh, uh, with flying colors. Thank you. Do we have any more questions in the room? Yeah, I have uh, Sorry, yeah. also no. Sorry. Yeah, uh, the biggest challenge, well, it's sports. <laughs> it's all a challenge. Um, look, I think uh, on both the Dino and Dash side, for me, uh, the ample answer is simple. The, the roadmap to get there is more complex, but you have to create a culture within, within a team um, that people want to show up every day and that and that the idea of the team and the organization is bigger than any issue because there are issues every single day. It's impossible not to have that. Um, but that extends to the fan base as well, right? And so when you talk about building a culture within a team, that's, that's something that can be rooted in a strong foundation, but it can be sustainable. Because what happens with football is there's turnover. Guys get injured, girls get injured, Someone gets transferred, someone gets traded, a new coach. All these crazy things happen that the, the people on the inside aren't, aren't in control of. But if, if you can show up every day with the idea that the organization, the, the orange is most important, then that culture piece for me is, becomes the bedrock of, of, of your success. How do, I, how do I help build that? Well, Again, best practices, trying to, trying to align myself and be somewhat of a bridge between, as Ted talked about, the players and the front office staff and the fans, being able to absorb so many of the, of the concerns of, of all of those parties involved. Look, at, when it comes to football, I'm, I'm non-risk averse. I, I, I'm, I, think you, I think you make the best decisions, you stick with those, and see what happens. And if you fail, then you, you figure it out from there. Like I, I'm, I'm not someone who holds on to the reins and, and pulls back. I think in football particularly, you've got to go full speed ahead. And so, look, I think that I think the challenge is to continue to build culture, not that we don't have we have, that Houston has a, has a great football and culture, and, we, and as do the, the Dash and Dynamo under this ownership. But for me, it's about further, like, like it can never be too great, if that makes sense, no matter how good the team is, no matter how great the vibe is. Because remember, we're in a sport where the culture feels really good when you win one nil and horrific on the plane after you've lost three nil. And so there has to be a bigger um, value system. There has to be a bigger cause for everybody and, that, and that's embedded in, in the culture. And so but that's with each team and, and how I can help that, I'm, I'm open to, to all strategies. Thank you. Now I'll switch to the next question in the room. We'll go to you. Hi there. Uh, my name is Herman Benitez with Foxtrot TV. Hi, Ted. <clears throat> Hello, Tim. Welcome to Houston. It's been reported that your purchase of the stake in the club is higher than the current valuation. To me, that signifies a long-term approach investment. During your initial evaluation of the club, the short week that you've had, what has stood out as something positive, and what's something that you can immediately see and focus, we must fix this in the long term. Thank you. Done your homework. Thank you. Um, yeah, look, this is absolutely it's a it's a long term process. Um, I, I, I've mentioned before about um, groups that I've talked to and why I didn't make the jump and, and, and join those organizations. It's because of the the reason why I joined here. You know, talking to Ted and the group. There's a there's a vision plan for for these clubs and. Um, it's long term, and that's uh, I don't fly by the seat of my pants. I wanna I wanna be involved in, a, in an organization that feels like family. Uh, I mentioned I mentioned the, the the players, the friends that I've played with who have been a part of um, the Houston Dynamo and, and Dash. I, I obviously I haven't played on the women's game, but I know a few of the women who have been through Houston, and they rave about their life here, their experience here, what that th their football life. What, and what that meant to them, and so um, for me, that was that was why. When you look at you talk about the current valuation, this is long term. I'm in it for the long haul. Um, to be present here for many, many years, uh, what could get? Fi I mean, you could probably tell me what needs fixing. I have, I've been here uh, 12 hours, but look, I, I think that uh, the vision plan for uh, 
the stadium and the training ground and of course our HQ and, and, and the di Dynamo buying up parts of the city and the Dash buying up parts of the city so that we can make it our own and that, that this is a footballing city. I think that's the the challenge but also the fun the fun part of this. I, I, I know all about the Texans and, and the Rockets and, and the Astros and they're they're phenomenal. Um, but this is a this is a football town. It's a footballing town and I think that um, that will continue to be our biggest challenge. Again, you, we talk about all these challenges that are here in Houston, and, we, and we've mentioned about you know, putting butts in seats and what, what's our biggest challenge? That's, that's soccer in America. That's the challenge for all of us. Um, but, but that's not important to me. What's important to me is, is, is Houston and how we continue to, to charge forward. So um, making people recognize uh, the dash and the dynamo in the city is, is, is number one for me. And uh, again, that, that you say, what can be fixed? N nothing can get fixed today. Um, but w but when you're in, when you're in sports, it's all about results, number one. But then, it, but also, that runs completely parallel to that is is the fans and the experience that they have. Not not just in the stadium, because it, it goes beyond 90 minutes. You all aren't fans for 90 minutes on one day a week. You're fans for life. It runs it runs your life. I know. I'm a fan as well, and it runs my life. And so, you know, that experience has to be, be different than anything else. I think we have two, one more in the back. Okay, then we'll go to Zoom. Um, we, we saw kind of what happened when David Beckham stepped into Miami and kind of the figure and the role of being an ex-player. How, how big is it to have somebody like Pat already as an ex-player and now Tim which I can already imagine how those keeper conversations are going to go. But uh, how big is that? Because you mentioned it early about bringing players and kind of what that does to a team. I, I, I think uh, the opportunity is massive, right? Um, first of all, you touched on it. Uh, I, th I think we have, uh, prior to Tim coming in, uh, an outstanding uh, organization in terms of player uh, identification, um, recruitment. Um, and uh, that's something that a lot of credit has to go to Pat and Asher for building out because it was non-existent when I came here three years ago. And I think the results on the pitch speak for themselves and, and nobody's gonna bat a thousand, but uh, I think they, they've done a phenomenal job and, and the, the proof is in our results over the last couple of years where they've had real control over how to constitute our roster. Um, so, uh, First of all, let's give uh, existing credit. Um, but then to supercharge it with somebody like Tim and to enhance those uh, recruitment efforts so it's not just uh, me uh, trying to speak my broken Spanish uh, on a Zoom with Hector and his family, which I had to do a couple times and I'm proud to do and I will do at any time uh, if it's uh, an enhancement in our recruiting efforts. But then, the and I saw it at the training facility today, the respect sometimes reverence that these players on the Dynamo and Dash side have for a legendary player like Tim. It carries a different weight. It carries a different sort of uh, resonance with the players, our existing ones, and probably ones that we'll be recruiting. So uh, to the extent that Tim is willing and able, and it's helpful to, to bring, uh, help bring on new players, I think it's, uh, it's going to be invigorating to those processes which are already uh, proving to be so successful based on ID and data and getting uh, successful uh, players over to the finish line. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question in the room and then we'll go to two on Zoom and, and wrap. Lisa, go ahead. Hey, Tim. Welcome to Houston. Having said that, how involved or how outspoken do you expect to be in the decision making going forward as far as Dynamo, as far as the Dash, not being afraid to pick up the phone and talk to Ted Siegel? Well, I'm not, I'm not afraid to talk to Ted. Ted's not, not afraid to talk to me. Um, look, I, for me, um, I've always been, I, I, I talked before, always been about relationship building and connectivity, and I think you need that in an organization. Um, you know, how involved will I be? Heavily, heavily involved. I think f first and foremost, I, I want to get up to speed with the, the critical members in the football club, both on the men's and women's side, um, in both in both groups and front office and players and and 
um, be able to translate that in a real way to, to Ted, who, who obviously has his finger on the pulse of everything and, and, and understands um, what needs doing, but just another set of eyes and ears um, so we can, we can toss around ideas and, and, and figure out what makes the most sense. So, you know, my involvement is high. I think it'll, it, it will continue to ramp up as we move forward. Of course, once, once you get comfortable in a position and, you know, here's the other thing. We're talking about people and it's all nice and well that I've done a lot of things in the game, but people ultimately have to get comfortable with me as a person on, on a, on a daily basis, on a level where they can pick up the phone and just talk that I don't have agendas, that I actually care. I mean, that's the most important thing. Today's great. Today's great, but it's what what do I do moving forward, right? And you have to build trust. And the only way you build trust is through consistency, um, through being present being and being that consistent voice. So um, I'll look to do that. I'll continue to do that as, as the days and weeks and months and years go on. Um, but yes, heavily involved. I didn't get in. I didn't get involved in this just to kind of sit around. I can do that all by myself, you know. So uh, being involved in in the game that we all love is. I'm very fortunate. I'm in a very fortunate position because uh, this is special. It's a special organization. It's the greatest sport in the world, and it's something that I live and breathe. Okay, we'll throw to two questions on Zoom that we have. Uh, hello, Tim. Uh, first of all, welcome to Houston. Um, I wanted to ask you if you've already spoken to the Dynamo players and what your message is to them and the coaching staff. Uh, thank you for your question. I did. I spoke to them. I, I, um, I shuddered at, at the at the sight of, of Hector Herrera. I mean, he. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who ran me ragged for a number of years. I was happy to be on his side. I can tell you that. Um, special player, special human. Um, it was great. It was great to meet the guys. A few of them, oddly, I even, I even played against. And um, you know, I, I think it was, for me, it's special to be around the group because, being a footballer, uh, is so hard. It's so, it's so intense. It's so emotional. It's so draining. It, it, it's special, but, I almost envy them because to be in their shoes and to be living that dream, every single day. Um, trying to be become great and chase greatness is uh, is not something that's afforded to all of us. So um, it's a good group. It's a really good group led by um, by Ben and, and Pat and Asher. And I just think it's um, you know from the outside looking in, understanding what a good team looks like and feels like. It's special to be a part of this group. Thank you, Juan. We're going to throw to Dustin on Zoom. Hey, Tim. Welcome to Houston. Hey, I just wanted to ask you about the Dash. I know you have a daughter that's now uh, playing college soccer. There seems to be this renaissance of women's sports, right, in the U.S. Um, and the Dash have kind of been a sleeping giant, it feels like, for so long. Just how do you, what do you see as the growth for this club here in Houston, uh, especially on the women's side? Yeah, it, it's a you know, great question. I think I'm so, I'm so invested in, in women's sports uh, in general, but you know, ha having, having a daughter play the game at a high level, um, dreaming of, you know, uh, trust me, I had some interesting conversations with her regarding the dash, and I said, that's not exactly how it works, but, uh, <laughs> but, but you know, it, uh, yes, listen, it would be her dream uh, to live and play in, in, in Houston. So uh, I think the great thing that we've seen in the NWSL is how quickly growth and turnaround can happen within organizations, and, and, and that's exciting. Um, you know, and we, we probably saw that with, with Gotham very recently, their ability to uh, change things around very quickly. And, and, and as you said, sleeping giant is, is an incredible phrase and one that's very accurate because um, Houston Dash is on uh, the lips of, of everyone in NWSL, and how can we continue to push that forward and, and create one lasting memories, but but two a championship caliber team, obviously big challenge, but it's there, and, and I think the um, the foundation is set. So um, again, and I think your your question is important for me uh, to elaborate on. I, I'm not just here for the men's side of the game. I have I have an equal uh, interest in in growing the women's game and, and creating a championship caliber football on that side as well, because that's um, to me important. 
Thank you everyone for attending. That will conclude our press conference for now. We will have photo ops available right here in the front. So if you give us a second, we'll get set up and then we'll have refreshments um, in the back as well. Thank you so much for attending and welcome to Houston. Thank you. <laughs>